Hey there, game developers. It's me, Titan Hex, back with yet another tutorial. This time we are going to be doing flow control in the event commands. So we we went over some of the um, text and game progression, uh, the, well, the uh, control timer parts last time. I figured this time we would go over some parts in flow control. I already took another. I already took a whole section up for conditional branches, which is important. So this time we're going to be going over loop, break loop, exit event processing. Uh, I'm going to have a separate uh, tutorial for common events. Um, and in the common events, I'm probably going to go over label, but I'll also go over label now. And we'll just go over comment real quick. That's an easy one. So let's begin with loop. The loop part of the event commands is pretty easy to learn. It, it works very similar to auto run and parallel here in the triggers. So the way all of those work is that everything within the contents will repeat over and over until something either changes or the loop is broken. Much like a auto run will repeatedly play or will repeatedly go through everything in the contents until say a switch is changed that um, until a condition is basically met on the next page or something like that um, or the event is removed or destroyed or anything any number of things can happen that will eventually stop an auto run or a parallel and it basically breaks it so loop is the exact same everything inside of a loop which would be everything between the loop and repeat above will happen over and over every single frame if not even faster than a single frame so the loop will repeat over and over until it is broken if you don't break the loop everything inside the loop will repeat constantly and it will eventually freeze and it'll basically well it will basically freeze up your game if you don't have a way to break the loop the only way to change that would be if, is if it is done in a parallel process. Then you will not freeze the game. So just keep that in mind. You always want to be able to break the loop somehow. And in order to break the loop, we just use break loop. So the problem here is that if we break the loop, even if we put some sort of text above it or something like that, the loop will only ever go once and then there is no point in the loop being done. I mean, if, if the loop only ever occurs once, there's no point in having the loop. The loop should have, should be able to go multiple times. The whole point of it is to repeat. So in order to properly break a loop, we should have a conditional branch where if a certain condition is met, the loop will break. In this case, I could have it where if I hit the cancel button and I put the loop inside of the break the break loop inside of the conditional branch, I can make it so that the loop will go indefinitely until the cancel button is pressed down. So generally, a conditional branch with a break loop inside it is one of the best ways and the condition some should be met inside the loop there should be some way that the condition that breaks the loop is met inside the loop a common example is that a variable will tick up by one until eventually the loop is broken. So in this case, the loop, uh, the variable seven will increase by one until eventually it hits 10. And then once 10 is hit, we will break the loop. So this makes it so that everything inside of the loop will happen 10 times until the loop is broken. And this can be a lot easier than say, creating the same thing 10 different times over and over. 
So in this case, I could throw in a change HP increase by one. So I can make it so that the player, the they're healed by one. And I could always throw in something like, I could throw in some sort of ability or spell or condition that makes it so that this loop will continue to go up to maybe more than even 10 times. I could throw in another variable and maybe set it so that the player has control over that variable and it can heal them a specific amount of times. Whereas normally, I would have to do it this way, um, there are there are definitely, definitely things where having that will be more useful than say, um, Hey, let me see if I can't find something here. There are certain ones where a variable won't always be an option. So it helps to have that there. So loop, that's just basically the, the sum of a loop. A loop is great for con checking a condition also repeatedly until that condition is met, such as creating custom controls. I can make it so that if you hit right, another event is moved so i can make it so that if you're holding on the right um i can set the movement of some other event to also move right and this can work really well especially inside of say a parallel process so now i have something where it's constantly checking to see if the player has right down And I can also make it so that if you hit a, say there's a control panel somewhere around here, and if you activate that control panel, you can start controlling a chicken or something like that across the way. I can make it so that um, you have to get a something, a, an animal or something to move to a certain place, and then a bridge will be built. Little things like that can be done using loops uh, inside of say an action button I can create a loop so this would be the panel and then in the loop I would check to see if the player has certain controls held down such as down left right and I can make it so that when they hit escape it cancels and then they break the loop and they're no longer controlling whatever object would be controlled over here so I can do things like that using loop in a conditional branch it is, however, important that inside of that loop, I generally put a wait one frame. And this is usually good practice anyways. It's a good idea to put a wait one inside most of your loops um, because otherwise there's a good chance that it'll freeze up while checking for certain things. So in, in this case, especially with checking if a button is being pressed down, it's a good idea to make sure that your loop has a weight in it, unless there's something else such as a some other weight. For example, I could do a, let's see, tint screen, and I can wait for completion here. This would count as a weight one frame. Um, so things like that can still work. It's just good to have a weight one somewhere inside your loop. If there are a few instances where you won't have a weight one, inside of your loop, and that's not a big deal, but this will basically check every frame. Uh, certain ones won't make it so that you need to wait one, and you can just test that out, and you should find a good medium where you either use or don't use a wait one. It all depends on what you combine it with. So next, we're gonna go ahead and jump out of loops. Since we already understand loops, we know how to break a loop. We know the method is usually throwing a conditional branch, uh, something inside of the conditional branch, uh, a break loop inside of the conditional branch, and making sure that the condition is met some point. At some point, the condition is met that will break the loop inside of that conditional branch. Uh, let's see, so control switch. So maybe um, if the player hits escape or something like that. There's, there's different methods. Loop is more used in systems than it ever is in, in actual gameplay, but there are some really awesome little systems and mini games you can make using the loop. So next we're gonna go ahead and jump to the exit event processing.
This one is pretty simple, so that's a plus. Exit event processing simply allows um, the event, the contents, basically to exit. So now I could have some text here and maybe some movement. And, and then at the point where it says exit event processing, the event process will end and you will have to reactivate it. Um, if it is on a parallel or an auto run, it'll just return back to where it was. So basically, if you don't want, if you have to exit event processing, you probably won't be using the auto run or parallel triggers. The action button is usually a good one. Player touch, event touch, all of those work. Um, but generally, you won't be using auto run or a parallel trigger for exit event processing. Now, exit event processing stops the event contents from being executed and nothing after it will happen so this switch will not be turned on this HP will not be increased by this much this won't happen this will happen this will happen it'll exit the event processing and nothing here past this line will happen so keep that in mind generally there's no point in having exit event processing on its own it is much like break loop meant to be inside of a conditional branch. So I can make it so that if the switch um, guest passcode or something is on, uh, it'll exit the event processing. So all of this will happen. However, if the player guessed the passcode correctly, this stuff will not happen. So you can make it so that the player will have to fight or not fight a certain battle based on if a certain event happened or things like that. So it's an it's generally used for very specific things, uh, systems more often than not. Normally, you can throw a conditional branch in, but this makes things so much cleaner. And it makes things a little nicer and easier to read. So exit event processing has its uses for sure, and it's good to keep those in mind. So next is label and jump to label. So we create a label and we give it a name and it's important to know that if you put a label inside of another event um, even a new event page that it won't if you use all right so if you use jump to label it'll jump over to that the, the label with the same name this cannot jump to this label because it's a different name but if I change this label name to ABC and I jump to label ABC, it will jump back up here. So if I do a show text and change HP and whatever else. So if I do all this, basically this label is memorized. It's going to read this, read this, read this, find this jump to label and it's gonna hop back up here do this, do this, do this, hop back up here, do this, do, and it's gonna become a loop. So just remember that uh, jump to label is super easy, awesome if you want to skip a bunch of information. Say, I have this happen, I have this happen, I have this happen, I have this happen, and then I can do jump to label, and I can name a label, and then I can have other stuff. And then I can jump or name the label here. So basically it'll read this, read this, read this, ignore or read this, jump to here and skip this. So it's important to know that labels can do that. They can make it so that you jump to different parts of code. And it one of the cool things that it can do that's useful is if I create a script that can never be met, so maybe one equals, if I create a condition that can never be met, like one equals two, one will never equal two, so this will never ever happen. And anytime it's reading the code, it's gonna find that this isn't true, ignore everything in here and keep going. If I throw a label in here, ABC, and say I jump to label at some point, so it'll jump inside of here and execute anything 
that's inside of this. So now it'll show this choice, whereas normally it wouldn't show it because it would say it's false. It'll jump here and just read it from there. So that's a cool little thing that it can do. It's pretty useful for creating special common events, uh, special little things where you might want code to only happen in very certain circumstances, otherwise it's ignored. Um, for example, a special common or conditional branch that checks or that is always false contains some sort of code, some special code, and if a certain condition is met, it'll execute that code. There. So now I can have some sort of special code and maybe something will happen and it'll jump into here if a certain condition is met. There are a few instances of systems that use that, so it's good to know that. Uh, it's also useful to say if you are creating a system and then you need to jump back in back in the system say you have a select item you're making a crafting system um, and at some point you don't want to add any more ingredients uh, if you say yes i want to add more ingredients it'll jump back up and do this saved item and then it'll check to see which item you're putting in or maybe you want to replace an item um, you can use jump to label to jump back to that part of the code uh, stuff like that can be very useful so creating this is really good for creating systems I th i'm pretty sure you know how it works now so that should be really useful next is comment so in comment uh basically this is this does nothing i can input a comment and it will have no effect on the game the player will never see this and it does no code so there will be no execution of whatever's in here. So comments are basically for you, the developer, to keep track of any notes or information you need to remember things about your contents. It's also useful if you're, you're sa saving a public eventing system or something like that. But basically you can say um, keeps track of monsters killed type and then you can maybe keep some systems in here it's very useful especially for say event searcher uh, I believe certain events nope I guess you can't search for certain comments and events if you could that'd be super useful but either way having the comment in there helps you keep track of some information or something you could put a to-do list or remember to finish this or add this later or things like that uh, this is for this maybe to help other people who you are contributing comment or contributing events and stuff systematically to uh, maybe you can put comments for the next person making something things like that are very useful with comments but basically they just do nothing they're there for you as the developer to just remember certain things or to keep track of information so now with that uh, we are done with the tutorial. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you tuning in. Hopefully this has taught you something very useful. With that, I will be on my way. So uh, like, comment, subscribe. I have a Patreon. If you could, um, if you want to be part of the Patreon, there are some great rewards there. There are some things that are, um, available for people it's, it's good to be a part of that so thank you looking forward to hearing from you and you, as always join me in the next tutorial